the epistle for this Mass of the Ascension of Christ the King into heaven is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1. The former treatise I made, O Theophilus, of all things which Jesus began to do and to teach until the day on which, giving commandments by the Holy Ghost to the apostles whom he had chosen, he was taken up, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many proofs, for forty days appearing to them and speaking of the kingdom of God, and eating together with them, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but should wait for the promise of the Father, which you have heard, saith he, by my mouth. For John indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Not many days hence. They therefore who were come together asked him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? But he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or moments which the Father has put in his own power, but you shall receive the power of the Holy Ghost coming upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and even to the uttermost parts of the earth. And when he had said these things, while they looked on, he was raised up, and a cloud received him out of their sight, and while they were beholding him going up to heaven, behold, two men stood by them in white garments, who also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand you looking up to heaven? This Jesus, who is taken from you into heaven, shall so come as you have seen him going into heaven. The Holy Gospel. From St. Mark, chapter 16. At that time Jesus appeared to the eleven as they were at table, and he upbraided them for their incredulity and hardness of heart, because they did not believe those who had seen him after he was risen again. And he said to them, Go ye into the whole world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be condemned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they shall drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands upon the sick, and they shall recover. And the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God. But they going preached everywhere, the Lord working with all, and confirming the word with signs that followed. Thus are the words of the Holy Gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. After the, the chanting of the Gospel, the Paschal Candle was officially extinguished and this symbolizes the ascension of our Lord into heaven on that first ascension Thursday which happened around the hour of noon which was the same hour that Christ was lifted up on the cross after being nailed and would hang on it for three hours so truly the words Christ himself said when the Son of Man be lifted up, he will draw all things to himself. And Christ ascending on this first Holy Ascension Thursday, Christ processed from the cenacle through Jerusalem, and the crowds who saw the whole procession, they didn't see our Lord. He was, made, he was invisible to their eyes, but he was visible to the eyes of the apostles and Our Lady and the 120 disciples. And they came to Mount Olivet, and it's there that Christ gave, answered some of their questions. He commanded them, go preach to all creatures, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. So baptizing them, them not in the name of Buddha, or Muhammad, or any false god, or, or Pakamama, but the true God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. 
and preach to all nations, our Lord said. To all creatures, says St. Mark, St. Matthew, to all nations. And that means all nations must come under the reign of Christ the King. They must come to hear his gospel. And like St. Vladimir, and like St. Olaf of Norway, and like St. Boleslav and Charlemagne, when they hear the preaching of the Catholic faith, they embraced it in all their country with them. This is what means to be a truly Catholic nation that embraces the faith passed down by the apostles, which means that we must also accept the Catholic Church that Christ established, his only one church, his only bride, his sheepfold. And here we see our Lord, the Good Shepherd, gathering his sheep. The, at night, during the night, the, the sheep will be gathered by the shepherds to protect them from the wolves, and they will watch them. Or, if they have barns, they'll gather them into barns, so that at night the wolves won't tear them up and devour them. So Christ, the Good Shepherd, he is, he is gathering his sheep, his sheep now, and taking them to heaven. He wants all to come into his, to his sacred heart. He wants all to come into that doorway of the new ark of salvation, which is the Holy Roman Catholic Church of tradition, not the schismatic conciliar church, not the Novus Ordo fabrication, which is built on the heresies of Vatican II. So it's built on sand, and it's crumbling. It's crumbling right before our eyes. But the, the true Catholic Church of tradition, she will always last till the end of the world. And even if Catholics are reduced to a handful, says St. Saint, Saint Athanasius, and faithful to tradition, they stay, they remain with the Catholic Church of all time. So our Lord gathers his sheep in now, before the night of the final separation comes. And in that night, the the... the the wolves, those who, those who don't gather with Christ during this lifetime, will scatter. And they will be thrown to the wolves of hell, the beasts of hell, where they were burned forever. And our Lord, he is not ecumenical at all. And it's, it's re-emphasized in this gospel by St. Mark, who believes and is baptized, will be saved. That is, if we live in the state of grace that we received in baptism. But he who does not believe will be condemned. Who does not believe will be condemned. So it matters what we believe. And we want to pray for those who don't know our Lord, don't know his holy Catholic faith, that they come to be converted, to at least turn to the sacred heart of Jesus and be forgiven. So listen to these great words of Dom Guéranger. Yes, Jesus is gone at his ascension. The earth has lost her Emmanuel. For 4,000 years had he been expected. The patriarchs and prophets had desired his coming with all the fervor of their souls. He came. His love made him our captive in the chaste womb of the Virgin of Nazareth. It was there he first received our adorations. Nine months after, the Blessed Mother offered him to our joyous love in the stable at Bethlehem on Christmas night. We followed him into Egypt. We returned with him. We dwelt with him at Nazareth. When he began the three years of his public life, we kept close to his steps. We delighted in being near him. We listened to his preaching and parables. We saw his miracles. The malice of his enemies reached its height, and the time came wherein he was to give us the last and grandest proof of the love that had brought him from heaven by dying for us on the cross on Good Friday. We kept near him as he died, and our souls were purified by the blood that flowed from his wounds and his sacred heart. On the third day he rose again from his grave, and we stood by exulting in his triumph on Easter morning over his death, for that triumph won for us a like resurrection. During the forty days he has deigned to spend with us since his resurrection, our faith has made us cling to him. We would fain have kept him with us forever, 
but the hour is come. He has left us. Yes, our dearest Jesus is gone. Oh, happy the souls that he had taken from limbo. They have gone with him and for all eternity are to enjoy the heaven of his visible presence. And that's exactly what happened on that first Ascension Thursday. Our Lady could see all the billions of souls who would go to heaven from Adam and Eve until our Lord at his resurrection. So St. Joseph was there and David the prophet and all the great prophets and all the great heroines of the Old Testament. Judith and Deborah and Sarah and Anna, the parents of our Blessed Mother, all those souls, and Adam and Eve too, they were all going to, at this Ascension Thursday, when Christ ascended into heaven, all those millions of souls marched into the gates of heaven in the triumphal procession into the heavenly Jerusalem. And on, Holy, on, on Palm Sunday, that is prefigured when the, the subdeacon will strike the door three times, the door of the church, and the doors will be opened, and then the procession marches in singing to Christ the King on Palm Sunday. All that prefigures this great triumphal entry into heaven of Christ the King leading leading his spoils, all the souls that he bought and died for and freed from the prisons of limbo, he brought them into the glory of heaven. And this is the great prefiguring as well of the second triumphal entry, which will be with all the souls from Christ till the end of the world. And that will be the final and finished triumphal entry into the heavenly city where there will be the new earth and the new heaven. So on this day, the Virgin Mary saw all these saints and all the angels escorted Christ by the billions. You know how the Roman armies would stand at attention when one of the campaigns would come back with great generals and they would come back with their slaves, with uh, char all chained, all the slaves who would be sold off in Rome who were captives from the territory that they conquered. And they would bring back tons of sheep, tons of cows, tons of their gold and their wealth. And they would bring them all to show the victory and the triumph of the Roman generals who went off to battle in, in other countries. And all the Roman soldiers would stand at attention and all the crowds would cheer at the top of their voice would cheer louder than the Super Bowl and louder than any stadium. They would cheer as, as the Roman armies came back with their scars and, and their wounds. And the emperor would crown one of, of, among them the great generals and the outstanding soldiers. And Cardinal P. of Poitiers, he actually mentions this, and St. Paul makes reference to this as well, that this triumphal entry into Rome is just a shadow compared to the triumphal entry of Christ into heaven on the Ascension Thursday, when Christ entered into the heavenly city. And then he also said, I won't leave you orphans. I'm not going to leave you orphans. And we have to remember this as well, when our church seems in such devastation. And the sacraments seem, for many souls, so far away and so distant and only seldom where they can find a Mass that's not compromised. So listen to these words of St. Vincent Ferrer, who talks about this. Our Lord said to his apostles when he appeared to them, Peace be to you. And he told them that today he wished to ascend to heaven, by which he completed the whole work of our redemption. Hearing this, the apostles began to weep, Christ said, If you love me, you would indeed be glad, because I go to the Father. Lord, we rejoice at your honor. This is the apostles speaking. Lord, we rejoice at your honor, but we are saddened because you leave us orphans. Because of our sadness, we are unable to eat. So out of love of them, Christ ate, so that they might eat. 
And eating together with them, he commanded them and that they should not depart Jerusalem, but should wait for the promise of the Father. They all got up from the table and in procession went out to the Mount of Olives, according to what Jesus said. This is the reason why this procession is held in many places. So St. Vincent Ferrer, he died in 1419. So in the Middle Ages, like we had today, a procession, that was a common practice among the Catholic parishes throughout all of the Christendom, was a procession on Ascension Thursday. When they had arrived on the Mount Olivet, Christ visibly appeared to them and saluted his mother and all the others, saying that he wished to ascend to heaven to the Father. The Virgin Mary, who sensed the presence of all the saints who were to ascend with Christ, said to her son with tears that if he pleased, she would ascend with him. Christ, drying her tears, said, and this is St. Vincent Ferrer paraphrasing these, he said to her, Blessed Mother, you shall remain in my place. You shall comfort my apostles. Because of the wisdom which I shall give you, you will destroy heresies which arise. Because of this it is said of the Virgin Mary, Rejoice, O Virgin Mary, you alone have destroyed all heresies throughout the whole world. And that's a common saying in the Divine Office. You alone, Virgin Mary, crush all heresies. And she still does. So Our Lady asked if she could ascend with him, but our Lord says, no, stay with the infant church, strengthen the apostles, and combat the heresies. Teach the apostles warfare to battle against attacks of my divinity, against the virginity of Mary, and she could be a witness, and all the truths of the Catholic faith. And now the apostles. And the apostles asked that they might also ascend with him lest he leave them orphans. And our Lord said, Go and therefore teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. I will not leave you orphans. Behold, I am with you, namely, in the sacrament of the altar, all days, even to the consummation of the world. How is our Lord with us? in the sacrament of the altar. It's the same Jesus Christ who stands in the glory of heaven who is right here in the tabernacle. It's the same glory and body, blood, soul, and divinity, the shining glory of Christ himself who will we receive in Holy Communion. And for those who cannot make a corporal physical communion, Christ still can come more by desire, communion by desire, I, we could label it. And St. Thomas specifically teaches this. Communion by desire, which we call a spiritual communion. That you can ask our Lord, Lord, come into my soul, and you can do this many times a day. And you will receive as much grace as you would as if you received physical communion. It's communion by desire. And St. Thomas will, in another chapter, align that with baptism of desire. But I won't go into that here. So I won't leave you orphans. I leave you myself in the Blessed Sacrament. And then Mary Magdalene said to him, O Lord, I was a great baroness, and now I am poor. Therefore, please, may I ascend with you. And Christ said to St. Mary Magdalene, You shall be the companion of my mother. And then our Lord was raised off the ground. And he gave, says St. Vincent Ferrer, these details are, are quite beautiful. When he was already ascending, they looked up at him and said, Lord, give us a blessing. And lifting up his hands, he blessed them, just as the priest after Mass gives a blessing to the people. And it's, spe and it's specifically said in the Roman ritual and in the rubrics of the Mass, when the priest gives a blessing, he's to look heavenward, extend his hands, and give the blessing, exactly the way Christ did. And apparently there are priests in purgatory who did not give blessings or were reluctant to give them. 
So learn the lesson. Never let a priest, never, never leave the presence of a priest without asking a blessing. And these blessings are real. They really give God's favor and graces to your soul. And this is a common practice, especially in Catholic countries. Wherever the priest passes, people ask for a blessing. Always. And, and it's still remnant in the Philippines and in South America. People won't let the priest leave their presence without a blessing. Then a cloud received him out of their sight. Not that our Lord needed that to ascend, but to show that every creature is subject to him, even the clouds. David said of God the Father, You have subjected all things under his feet. Psalm 8, verse 8. When, however, Christ was in heaven, he ascended quickly, because the apostles no longer could see him. He sent two angels to the apostles, still gazing up to heaven, who said to them, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up to heaven? This Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven shall so come as you have seen him going to heaven. And then they went back to Jerusalem with great joy, praising and blessing God. And St. Vincent Ferrer has, again, these, these little details he brings out are, are tremendous. He says, here when it is said, the apostles were adoring in the temple with such joy. We have an example and a moral instruction about going to church and keeping the feast days with joy, closing our temporal businesses as Christ rested on the day of the resurrection. So he's here talking in the ages of the faith. All businesses would shut down on Ascension Thursday and, on, of course, on Sunday. But our society has become pagan again, and, and men are doing manual work on Sundays. So I remind you, we're not allowed to cut the grass. We're not allowed to do heavy laundry. We're not allowed to do heavy shopping, the heavy, heavy shopping on Sunday. We're not allowed to do manual work because our Lord wants us to imitate the apostles and adore our Lord. And then St. Vincent Ferrer says, And the feasts are kept perfectly, as it is hint hinted when it is said, they were always in the temple, that is, perfectly. Indeed, your goods and your crops grow more from observing a feast well than from your labors. So he's talking to the 1400s. Everybody, most people had farms. Most people had at least a small farm. So he's telling them, don't work on Sundays. And if you don't work on Sundays, you're going you're gonna to be fine. The fruit of your labors will be more abundant, he tells them. And that goes for the modern working father of a family as well today. And mothers who are forced to work. They shouldn't have to work. But if they're forced to work because of circumstances, let Sunday as much as possible be the day of rest. And God will especially with the daily rosary, he'll, he'll pay the bills. He'll take care of all the details. But keep Sunday holy. And that goes also for those who don't have Mass on Sundays and Holy Days of Obligation. They can follow the Mass live stream when it's available. And they must sanctify the Sunday. And at home, get dressed with a tie, get dressed with the best Sunday clothes, as you would at Sunday Mass. And be disciplined about keeping the Sunday holy. And it's very easy for traditional Catholics, especially the Catholics of the, of the resistance, it's very easy to fall into a lackadaisical, lazy mentality and let Sunday pass without any sanctification or just a light, a light sanctification of Sunday. No, it must be an hour. The same time we would spend at Mass, we would spend sanctifying the day. And, and many people follow the live stream, which is fine. And if not, then read the Missal, pray the Rosary, spiritual reading, or listening. But we must, it's a divine command. It's not just the church law, but it's the divine command that we must sanctify Sunday. So we must be careful uh, not to get lazy. And if there is a resistance Catholic Mass in your area, within an hour, within an hour or, or more, we're in the days of, you know, air-conditioned cars. 
if mass is available, you're bound to go. You're bound to go on a day of obligation or a Sunday. If it's within your reach. So unless there's health problems or an emergency, one is bound to go. But we have to be careful in these days of chaos that we start getting comfortable in the chaos and neglecting God and neglecting our duties towards God, especially the sanctification of Sunday and holy days of obligation. And no, we're not the new SSPX here. I'm not going to tell you a lie that Ascension Thursday can be replaced by the Sunday, this coming Sunday. That's false. Traditionally, this is the Holy Day of Obligation. It's Ascension Thursday. This is the day. There's no such thing as Ascension Sunday. It's Ascension Thursday, and this is a Holy Day of Obligation. So it's very, very pitiful when the new SSPX slides and slides and slides, and another slide is about the changing Ascension Thursday to Sunday, and that's false. We stay with the traditional code of canon law. We stay with the traditional practice of the Catholic Church. For the United States, this is a holy day of obligation. And then he, 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 can, he talks here. Third, they are kept with a devout mind when it is said praising and blessing God, namely with silence hearing Mass. Hmm. He doesn't say anything about the dialogue mass. With silence, hearing mass. Let there be at church humble and devout entries. Let quiet conversation, quieta conversatio, happen in them if, ne if it's necessary. Pleasing to God, tranquil for onlookers. Uh, this is said against those talking in church, etc. So, let's adore our Lord Jesus Christ, who stands with his physical body that was nailed to the tree of the cross, that was buried, that rose from the dead. His body is glorified in heaven. And we also are meant to share in the qualities of the resurrected body that Christ had. Clarity, you will shine with the glory of God. Brighter than ten suns, you will shine with the grace of God in you. Those saints that go to heaven Two, you won't suffer. You'll never get sick. You'll never get old. You'll live, you'll be 5,000 years old, and you'll just be as young as you were at age 30 with the resurrected body. 10,000 years old, you're still going to be exactly the same and young and vibrant. And third quality is agility. You'll be able to move where you want. You fly through the air. You'll be able to fly through the air. So imagine, again, I say this, and I don't mean by this to be frivolous, frivolous, but we see out on the ocean, even the dolphins play, even the school of fish play, even dogs play, and birds. So God is not boring, and in heaven, imagine what would be the actual organized games, we could say, the hockey games, the football games, the the dances that will be with laws, they'll have to be set rules. You can't disappear because that comes with the resurrected body. You'll be able to appear and reappear. You'll be able to make your body disappear to the eye, to the physical eye. So that's part of, all this is part of the, the glory to come for those who persevere to the end. So let's beg the Virgin Mary the grace of perseverance on this day, to grace of, to persevere to the end it's to those that win the crown. As St. Bernard said, the crown is not given to those who begin well. The crown is not given even to those who advance very far. The crown is given to those who persevere to the end. And what's the key to perseverance? Prayer and patience. Be patient with all the crosses God sends. Be patient with our own miseries, our own selves, be patient with our neighbor. Be patient with God. Because God puts us in this time of chaos in the church. Be patient. Persevere. Deepen in the love of God. This is how we will become saints. Which joy I wish for all of you. Through Christ the King ascended glorious into heaven. O Mary conceived without sin. Pray for us. O Mary conceived without sin. Pray for us. O Mary conceived without sin, and for those who do not have recourse to thee, 
especially all communists and Freemasons and other enemies of Holy Mother Church. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.